This is the sixth video in a series on setting up a character to use the Human IK system in Maya 2012. In this video I'm going to cover um, the basics of using the paint tool, a little bit of an overview, and then talk a little bit about the, the fundamentals and best practices in terms of how to paint. In another video I'll cover actually painting in a chain and then uh, maybe another video on problem spots if I have any trouble with this guy anywhere. Um, okay, so first thing I do is just maximize my workspace, just control spacebar and uh, just make this a nice large view for me to work in. Select the skin and then go under skin, edit smooth skin, and then paint skin weights tool. And I'll just pull out to the options here. Alright, so first thing you're going to see is you have different brush profiles that you can use. Um, you can select other brushes, but typically I'll just use these. Uh, you have a radius slider, and here you can see the initial radius size. And if I press B and hold it and drag, I have that interactive um, way to resize that, and typically that's what I use in Maya. Some other stuff in here, I'm just going to sort of skip this stuff for right now and just get to um, doing this stuff. So um, the head is selected, and I can see here that um, it looks like the head is weighted 100% to the head joint, which makes sense. Um, since we just went through in the component editor in the previous video, video and just flat set them all to 100% follow the head. Um, but if I look at the uh, right up leg, uh, you can get a sense of um, that coverage. And here's what's going on with the right leg. Complete crap weighting, as you can see. Uh, have a lot of problems that I'll need to go back and repair. But um, I'm not going to concern um, myself with that in this video. I'm just going to cover getting the head and neck um, painted in and, and talk about the different uh, modes of painting and that sort of thing. Okay, so you have these different operations. You have a replace operation, an add operation, a scale, and a smooth. And we'll just cover them one by one. So uh, first on replace, if I set opacity to 1, which typically I'll just leave the opacity alone and change the value. Um, but uh, if I have a, a opacity of 1 and a value of 1 in the mode of replace, and you can see here this vert is not going to follow the head right now. If I just swipe that, now it's following it 100% because I set that to a value of 1 and it's opacity 1 and it's replace. So it's, now it's just following the head 100%. And then to test that, you can middle click, and then I'll give you your rotate manipulator. And then you have to middle click um, on one of the uh, controllers, and I'll just roll that back there. This way, I can sort of test different uh, poses without having to leave the paint tool. Then when I left click, I'm right back to painting. Okay. Um, so let me just keep covering this before I um, go over how to actually clean this up. So um, let's say if I were to replace this with a value of, say, point uh, one or so and then paint in the belly right here if I paint over that again it's still just point one and sh you shouldn't see much movement at all we're seeing a little bit of movement in the in the row above just because I have sort of a soft brush but it won't go over point one uh, so that's why you'd you'd use replace just to set something um, to a very specific value in this case I would want this to have uh, no influence from the head. So let me just replace that with a value of zero. And now you can see the head has no influence at all um, on this. Um, but uh, let's contrast that with the, with the add operation. Same thing, just point 0.1. And I'll hit that same row. So that'll move up, same as it did on the other. But then when I hit it again, it'll move up to point 0.2. And then I hit it again and move up to point 0.3. So you see you're just adding to whatever that value already is. And again, if I set this to replace, value of 0, and then go to a hard brush, I could just swipe over this area and just knock that influence out 100%. Okay. Um, so these two are... Um, really common to use. The scale, I mean, all of them are, are used a lot, but scale and smooth can sometimes get a little bit hairy. Um, so let me just talk about scale real quick. So scale is a multiplier. Um, so scale of a value zero means basically don't make any change at all. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, scale of a value zero means get it complete, get completely lose that weight. So it's um, completely drops the weight out. Scale of value one means it's not going to scale at all. So a scale of 0.5 means that whatever the influence is, it will just drop it in half. 
And if you hit it again, it'll drop it in half again. Um, so it, whereas add, you use a very low value typically. Typically, you'll be down under 1% when you're using an add operation just so you can uh, build up the influence. Uh, with scale, typically you're going to be somewhere more around the 0.9 and up. And that's a little bit of a quirk when I press the tab key there. Um, so 0.9 and up uh, will scale this thing down in a way that's a little easier to control. So typically the scale operation, you'll just go down uh, slowly. Um, so uh, the smooth operation um, is going to try to blend the vert with what its neighboring vertices have weight-wise. So um, the head has 100% uh, influence here and zero here. So if I were to smooth this, it would try to make this 50%, try to make this 50% influenced by the head, not immediately, but it would uh, ultimately try to get down to around 50%. Um, uh, and so I would have to build it up to, to 50%. But at any rate, uh, I don't necessarily want to do that directly because right now these are following the head 100% and these verts are not following the head at all. So what would happen here is if I painted um, this with smooth, this would reduce the influence of the head by some percentage and it would distribute that among other close joints. So uh, it might distribute some to the shoulder. Uh, to the spine and to the other shoulder. Where what I want it to do is very specific. I want it to distribute uh, weight only to this uh, upper spine right here. I don't want it to distribute to the shoulder unless I want the shoulder to control that. So this is just um, part of the best practice of uh, painting weights. You start on the outside of a chain and you work your way in and as you go you lock off weights. And uh, when you want something to resist moving uh, you go to the next um, joint up the chain and you add to that. So in this way you would be staying positive. So I will be doing some smoothing on this but I would recommend as a general workflow especially when you're starting just always stay positive. This way you know what's getting influence. Um, hopefully that makes sense about uh, what the scale and smooth operations do. If I scale um, the head right here, um, let me just drop, so go ahead and drop these down and we can take a look at what the influence uh, went to. So I'll just select that vert for instance and go to uh, General Editor's Component Editor. So you can see it did exactly what I expected it might do, uh, which was it reduced from the head and it distributed to the left and right shoulders as well as the spine. Uh, that's not really the way I'd want this to be handled. So let me just back that up. Okay. Um, so the way you would actually want to do this so that you would be staying positive uh, would be select the next joint up the chain, spine 2 in this case, uh, set a low value, uh, add operation and a low value. Let's just start with 10%. Um, and as I paint this in, it will do the same thing. It will look very similar, but it'll just be resisting um, against one joint. So it'll only be using spine um, 2 to add that resistance. Then when I come back through with the smooth tool, and paint over this. It looks like I need to come back uh, with the spine and sort of bring these down a bit over here. And I'll go to the head and run the smooth across here. Okay, so that should be a, a lot smoother uh, deformation through this area now. And if we were to check this out in the uh, component editor now, you see that it's distributed weight from the head to spine 2, specifically because I told it add weight to spine 2 and then I smoothed between head and spine 2. And since it already this vert already was sharing influence between head and spine 2, it just evened out the distribution uh, on vertex to vertex, uh, but among those. So this is a good way that you can actually control how your weights are being distributed. So again, to test this, I'll middle click and then drag down here. And that looks like relatively decent weighting. Um, 
I want this to stretch up around the neck, but I don't want it to crush the chest. I mean, you're, you've got a sternum and clavicles, collarbones in here. This stuff doesn't move when you move your head up and down. Of course, we have a neck uh, also, and this little guy doesn't, so uh, that doesn't help uh, the, the case here. I just have a lot of distortion that happens over a small span of, uh, of edges here. Okay, but that looks uh, that looks pretty good. I'm I'm all right with that um, that sort of distortion from the front. So then I would kick this thing maybe over to the side here and get a te get a sense of what's happening, and then left click, and uh, you can see what's going on. This is not following the mesh very uh, very well right now. So I need to uh, bring these down a little bit on the side. And actually, let me go ahead and, and see what this is going to look like uh, when I roll this forward. Oops, uh, wrong axis there. I'll go ahead and crank that further. Further than I expected to, it's generally a good idea to go to relatively extreme poses. Okay, so yeah, same thing here. I just want to control this a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do the front and back first, and then I'll hit the sides and just even it out. So uh, again, I want this to resist moving uh, a little bit more than it is. So I'll go to the next chain in. So that is going to be spine two. And then I'll choose an add operation, low value. And in this case, let me see what I got going on. Got a good uh, soft brush uh, profile. And I'll just make this a little bit smaller so I can control it a little bit better. And I'll brush these guys in to resist that movement a little bit more. So you can see there's actually quite a lot of movement in this right now, so I'm going to bring this down considerably here. And I could also add a little bit of this moving up, uh, and I think I will. So just go ahead here and just bring this up very slightly. Um, that way I'm balancing out this distortion a little bit into the back. Um, and I don't think that, uh, that small amount will uh, look awkward or anything. Uh, so I do want this next uh, next one to come down slightly as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of uh, influence to this. Okay, so that's looking all right. And then I'll go ahead and go back to the head and smooth this out. And again, I'm going to cover... Um, I'm going to fix this up rather um, when I get to the side as well. But that distortion uh, looks much better distributed now. The head still looks solid, but uh, I'm now distributing that across uh, a couple of rows at least. All right, and I'll just drop that back and see what that does. So the way that crushes at the back of the neck is actually okay with me. It's not caving in too much. I do want that to crease at some point, and it looks like it, it does. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty good with uh, what we got going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this thing from the side. And again, uh, I just want to make this look like clean topology coming around here. So this edge loop here, instead of going way up here, it should come straight across here. So that's an easy goal for me to see uh, when I've met that objective. So again, I'll go to spine two because I want this to resist. Choose add and then brush these, uh, these guys in so that this forms a, a nice smooth arc. Okay, so something like that's looking pretty good. And I'll probably let these come down just a bit as well. And that's definitely going to need to be smoothed. Uh, you can see I've created a little bit of a mess over here. And I could allow this to move up slightly, but I don't think it should move too much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, smooth that on the head just sort of balance out what I've done there. You can see how nice that uh, that makes the uh, edge loops uh, nice and clean again instead of uh, having little sharp points up and down aside from where the topology is a little funky right here. Um, okay, so that that's looking all right. Let me take a look at what that actually looks like on the mesh. That's good, sort of got a jaw line under there more or less. Okay, I'm all right with that. Do the same thing over here. Now, incidentally, I can mirror left to right. 
Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up. And this will actually be mirrored left to right anyways as I uh, move forward here. Because I'll be working on only a single arm and a single leg, and then I'll mirror that across. So this will be mirrored at some point anyways. Um, Alright, so let me go ahead and just uh, do the same thing over here. I'm go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this just a little bit further here. If you go out and you uh, do a pick walk and it goes to sort of the wrong place, you can just click back in, select your joint, make it a little more extreme there. Okay, this looks like a little better. Again, I want to go to the next joint, up the chain. It's fine too in this case. Paint these guys in. That's uh, I just made a made that kind of ugly. Let's back that off a little bit. Okay, okay. now I just come back and uh, smooth this out against the head. Again, because I've been telling it exactly which vert uh, to resist with, um, all of this should be exactly as I would expect it to be. So the head and the uh, spine are the only things that have influence here. Eventually I'll come back and I'll hit this with, um, with the shoulder and I'll need to add a little influence back in here, but it's just easier practice to move down a joint chain. So the next one down here is spine two. And as I come in, I'll get to the shoulder and I'll um, basically we make sure that's clear. I'll come in, meaning I'll start at the fingertips and I'll work my way into the wrist and I'll work my way into the wrist from the thumb and then up this chain to the shoulder. When I get to the shoulder I'll make a change, whatever change is necessary, removing weight from the spine and adding it to um, the clav here and, uh, and everything should work out. Okay, so again um, just double check what I've got going on. It's a little bit quirky um, underneath there but this is a giant head with no neck. Uh, it's not too bad. I feel okay about that. It's actually coming down maybe a little more than I would love right there, um, but I can address that later. Um, okay, I just want to get on to the next steps here. This is this is taking quite a while. Uh, it is a lot of back and forth with waiting. Just so you know, um, you just have to uh, you know do a lot of um, painting, testing, painting, testing, and and oftentimes. Uh, as you work your way down a chain, you'll find, oh, you, sh you should have done something different uh, a little further up, so you can go back and make those changes. Um, okay, one thing that I haven't talked about really is setting your max and minimum color here. Um, so one reason you would want to do this specifically to the max color is if you're trying to see um, if your uh, selected joint has any influence somewhere you wouldn't expect it. So if I set my max color to 0.01, that means make it pure white if it has at least one percent of influence on a vert. I'll press enter and you can see it just makes it look like it has a little bit more influence here but more or less uh, everything looks as, it sh as it's expected to look. But very often times you'll find that um, if you do this on the finger here that you know something over here just has the tiniest amount of influence uh, and it'll show up as pure white you can just knock that right out. So uh, once you've double checked that, everything looks good, you can go ahead and lock off the head. Uh, one thing that uh, I'll say uh, that is a generally a good practice as well is under skin, edit smooth skin, there's this prune small weights as well. And what this does is if, if it's below, look by the default here, below 1%, it's just going to take it out as an influence and it will redistribute that very small amount of um, influence to all of the uh, joints that have larger influence. The reason you'd want to do this is um, oftentimes when you lock a, um, a particular joint's influence, um, if something has like uh, let's say a thousandth of a per of um, of influence, then that's still they still try to calculate that when you do smooth and scale operations, and you'll start getting a, kind of erratic behavior. So it's a good idea just to prune out those very low influences uh, along the way here. 
And once you are done with the head, uh, which this would then be done, just lock it. And what that means is, whatever the head is currently influencing, don't change that with your smooth or scale operations from this point forward. And this is part of the reason that you work from the outside in down joint chains. So what you do is you finish a joint, uh, make sure the influence looks good. Anything that needs to resist that joint goes to the uh, joint, up, um, you know, I guess before that in the chain. Um, and then you double check that your joint isn't influencing something somewhere else uh, as you um, then where you expect it is influencing and then you just lock that sucker off and you're you just call it done and you're ready to move on so you just do that um, in on all the different limbs until you get to the uh, to the center and then you work down the spine to the hips and then you're done with waiting um, so that's the basics um, those are the basic um, rules that I follow um, when painting and uh, I'll just do another video when I work all the way up a leg.